Good morning, everybody. I am going to bring you today a video showing you um, a time lapse version of me painting um, this still life. Um, these um, flowers have captivated me, their color is so intense. Um, I picked this teal colored, kind of light teal colored um, uh, bedspread to have as a background because I love the way um, those complementary colors play off of each other. Uh, what I've done so far um, is done an underpainting, which is part of my um, intensive mentoring program with Ann Blair Brown this summer. Um, and so this is a um, 12 by 12 stretch canvas, um, and I've used burnt umber to do an underpainting where I'm trying to um, pull out the values as I see them. So the darkest thing um, is the center of the flowers and the shadows on the um, on the cloth and then a little bit of the, the background I've sort of averaged out as a dark shape. Um, and then really the lightest areas are where the light is, um, is hitting those flowers, even though they're not white, they're definitely the lightest area. Part of this challenge is also to use a limited palette. And so I wanna show you what I'll be doing today. So I've picked a somewhat unconventional limited palette. Mm -hmm. One of each primary color is not unconventional, but my blue that I've chosen is cobalt turquoise. And the reason why is I really can't get to that teal turquoise color um, from using most um, yellow-blue combinations. So I'm gonna start with that. Um, my yellow is um, Indian yellow, which when you add a little white really turns into something that looks very much like cadmium. And then I'm using a cool red, which is alizarin permanent. I have a little liquid here. This is the burnt umber that I used, and then I have titanium white. <clears throat> so I'm gonna switch now to um, a, uh, a time-lapse mode and I'll do some color mixing first that I'll show you, and then I'll start putting paint on the canvas. So what I'm doing is mixing the colors that I think I'm likely to use in my um, painting. So I started with the reds and oranges for the flowers, mixing shadow colors and colors that are going to be in the light. I struggled a little bit with that because I couldn't really get that vivid orange with this color combination. Now you see I'm doing the color of the cloth and trying to again mix the shadow and light values. And then this is trying to make my darkest dark, which I'm going to use for the background. You see my poor dog come to the window and I am totally oblivious. Uh, I mix up the greens that I think I'll use for the stems. There's just a little of that. And again, trying to get to a nice light color that still reads as green was a little bit tricky, but I was happy with what I got there. So now I'm going to get ready to add color. I've pre-mixed my piles. My underpainting has my value structure down. And so um, I should have a pretty clear um, guide of, um, of how to put things down. Um, generally speaking, I start with my biggest shapes and generally go dark to light, but I probably break that rule a little bit here. Um, so what you can see is I'm starting with some of that dark background and some of the darker reds. Next I lay in that shadow color, and I'm really carefully observing the colors that I see behind the glass. When you're painting glass, you're really painting what's behind it but what I observed was that it was a little lighter and a little more neutral. So I start adding in some of those lights um, and a little bit of the stems. I decided the shadow was too dark, and so you can see me going in there and um, lightening up a bit. Um, when I looked at my subject, there were a couple of areas where the light just came right through in a very bright yellow um, onto some of that, and you see that I've added that trying to get the, the rim of the glass a little bit. Uh, I decided to put the polka dots in. I love polka dots. Um, and so I'm careful. They look like they're the same color, but they're, of course, darker in shadow than they are in light. Finally, I'm coming through and kind of carving out some of those spaces with my background color. And a few final touches to try to indicate the glass a little better at the bottom. And I smooth out a few of my edges between the light and shadow, and I'm done. So this is where I was at the end of my painting session. 
I am pretty happy with it, but I may make a few changes with the um, reflections or the drawing just to refine things a little bit more. I'm grateful that you've tuned in. I would love to hear from you with your comments or suggestion. And feel free to visit my website, www.debbiemuellerart.com, and I would love to have you subscribe to my newsletter as well. Thanks, and have a great day.